Dear Automatic Subtitle Algorithm, Please recognize that something not unlike English is spoken in this video, so that I will have less work producing proper subtitles later. In exchange, I promise to try my very best to be an obedient subject to our future machine overlords. Deal? Chili. Peppers. Medaka. Venus flytraps. Jumping spiders. Glowworms. Hissers. So far I did one topic per video, but let me try a new format where I'm putting a bunch of updates into one video. I hope this will fly with my audience. Yes, I have an audience, a teeny tiny one, just a little shy of 100 subscribers so far. And most of my views apparently come from non-subscribers, but I will list the time codes anyway, so you can skip to the topic that you want to see. Well then, this is Weirdlog number 9. Let's start simple with a really quick rehouse. I have some Madagascar hissing cockroaches and they um, I did not plan for this but they had babies. I used some of them as feeders but uh, a small group of them I did raise and now they have grown somewhat and they are big enough that I can add them into the enclosure of the parents without getting lost which I will not do. There it is. And you might remember the video where I had a look at an old African a giant African land snail enclosure and it was infested, if you want to say, um, by some little isopods and small spiders and I used the isopods as cleaner crew and uh, also in this tank and the spiders, although I did uh, release them back into the wild, some of them seem to have around. There are still some in this enclosure. Small little red ones. Anyway, there's the parent. Is the cockroach. Only a little cranky. And let's put the babies in there. Those are quite tough creatures, so just, I can just put it in like this. Or not. Isopods seem to enjoy eating old food and even when it gets moldy they feast on it. I 
think this is Nagurus Cristatus. It's, uh, it's called Dwarf Striped Isopod or something like this. They seem to enjoy the company of the, the same cockroaches. I will f***ing kill you. And now for some sad news, I'm afraid. My colony of Sardinian glowworms, which I have had since 2004, has dwindled down dramatically in size. It um, seems to have suffered from the again very hot and dry summer just like last year, but I had so many individuals for the 20th generation and now they are, I'm afraid to count, <laughs> honestly, and uh, this situation was there before, but I'm, I'm, I'm worried that I might lose them and that whatever rest of sanity I have left uh, might be lost together with them. But no, I'm sure I will make it anyway and there's certainly uh, still hope that I will make it. And, um, well, if you die, I will f***ing kill you. But let's uh, try not to to make this choice and I will start by giving them a new enclosure because they have fed some uh, on some snails and now the old enclosure is dirty and I will just transfer them to a fresh one again using the sponge crop method tried and true where I'm, I have already washed this so that there are no residues from the factory or anything. And this has proven to work. So it's not the reason for this population loss, which really, really annoys me. I just rip this apart. Normally I leave some bigger ones at the end, but this will work. And at least this method is very easy. There we go. see the sizes are somewhat variable. Bigger larvae, smaller larvae. And I'm not sure whether it's entirely just the heat and well a dry summer is not ideal for finding snails and slugs also. And I had to rely on my African land snails, and maybe they were not so good nutritionally. Uh, they are still growing. Here's one larva that has recently molted. There's the skin, and here's the larva. Still not pigmented. should probably use a brush or something which look more would, would, look, would look more professional but I'm not a professional. Just an enthusiast or hobbyist. 
and I have still enough feeling in my fingertips left to pick them up and now that I said it I cannot pick it up of course Still quite clean. I could reuse this, but I won't. Maybe I'll feed it to some of the isopods. They seem to break those sponge cards down. They are supposed to be. Supposedly, they are biodegradable. They're made of cellulose and some cotton fiber, so this should not be the problem. I don't know about the coloring agents used in this, but. They didn't mention it on the package. If they cling too much, gently blowing helps. Again, this one looks quite dead. Now, quarant I will uh, qu I will quarantine it. Uh, I'm still moving a little bit. Put this aside. And now for the rest. Don't look too much alive as well. That's not very encouraging. I have transferred some of my specimens to other breeders and um, some of them have started their own colonies and maybe I can come back to them. I would not go back to Sardinia to pick them up in the wild again. And those are some molds left, which is really handy. stick there and I don't have to sort them out. Yeah. Got 
Let's look fine. Maybe they are the strongest that are left and they will continue the whole colony. Other than that, there are just two larvae of previous generations left and a bunch of unhatched eggs and I don't expect them to hatch anymore. And that's all that's left. I hope for the best. Whoa, whoa, whoa. On the plus side, because most of the glowworm larvae of the previous generation are lost, only two of them left, this enclosure which, in which I had them is now free, and I will use it for my jumping spiders, or one of them. Let's start with Dot, which is my favorite of the trio. There she is, or uh, I think it's it's a she. Not assuming genders. If spiders can have gender, they can have sex, but I don't think they have a concept of gender. There she is. There it is. God damn it. Normally I'm always annoyed when people do this. In German, the, the word for spider is female, grammatically speaking, so I'm always happy that in English you can say it all the time, but normally I do, but not now. Well, Dot seems a little bit of a female sounding name, maybe. She has molted. It. Molded. Well, I decide I'm just intentionally saying it wrong to teach everyone a lesson. Yes, that's that's what I intend. <clears throat> okay. I'm using fake plants because uh, living ones don't really work well in this type of enclosure. Because if I put it in the sun, it gets too hot. I'm using artificial light. It's not, a, not good enough. But it is sort of bioactive because in the substrate there's again uh, our friend Nagurus, Nagurus Christatus, the dwarf, dwarf striped isopod, or however it is called in a common, common name. And uh, apparently, you know, um, as I said, glowworm larvae were in this before and I found um, no dead bodies. So apparently the isopods did polish them off. And I wonder if they did even eat specimens that were in mold. I wonder if that's a thing. I guess not, because this type of isopod is really common as a cleaner crew, and that's uh, not really nice if they eat other arthropods that are in mold. 
I would probably not eat a tarantula or something, but a small glow one, maybe. Although they apparently don't taste too good, which they advertise with their glow. And there's Dot. Just in case. style artificial aquarium plants in a jumping spider tank that's style not good style but still some kind of style put them in the substrate so they can build their roots ah. Well, actually, there is a little bit of uh, not Java moss, but something similar in there. I just did put it on the damp ground. Damp, not damp. And um, maybe it will develop. Doesn't need too much light. It's worth a try. And otherwise, it's just food for the isopods. Also, I wonder if Dot will try to uh, eat some of those isopods. Crustaceans for a spider doesn't seem all that natural, but we will see. That's not really nice looking, but we'll do. We'll do. I have to destroy your little hammock to get you out. Yeah. I need another tripod. I cannot film this using the other hand. Get closer. Yes, yes, yes. Please, not this way. Maybe. You in there? You are.
those are its and you don't really get a good look at the wonderful enclosure. Wow, such beauty. Anyway, I have two more. Those are did and that. Um, as you can see, I, uh, if you saw the previous jumping spider videos, um, I already rehoused them in the meantime, and I used a similar setup than uh, as before. Uh, not a small smoothie flask, but a big juice bottle. And punched in some air holes on the top, on the side, and I used um, this little bit of foam where you stick flowers in. And in the tray, there's usually water to keep it moist, but I don't have it in now because I was planning to rehouse them, and that's that's messy this way. Did again in the hammock, silken hammock, and it molted recently, maybe yesterday or a few days ago. And that molted yesterday. And see where it is together with the old mold, shed skin, and again horrible fake aquarium plants the structure. Um, where will I put it? Uh, these some fresh cocoa fiber and look who I found this little guy was hiding in the door frame, just there in this slit, and it's one of the hisses I've shown, I've shown earlier in the video, and I had them in this enclosure for a short while, and this one was apparently left and forgotten. You can see he is a bit smaller than the others, probably because he didn't get as much food. I will put them to his brothers and sisters. him or it? It. Because I don't know if it's male or female. It would have been weird if I said it. Because cockroach in German is Küchenschabe or Schabe or Kakerlake and it's female, diplomatically speaking. Who knows what's going on in my little brain. So, how do I get the end of it? I can 
and so we pull out the plant. That's a bit wobbly and not very useful in this type of enclosure, I guess. See the glycerin, the claws of the spider, a nice shiny metallic blue. And I think if I remember correctly, this is a sign that this is a male actually. But I'm not sure, it's still not fully grown yet. open. Maybe not directly there. some rests of the mold to see and I will try the easy and boring road now and just put it in there it will add to the structure because this is really not enough not enough um, I will get some more horrible fake plants or other things like corkwork maybe and but so far it's still more room than before and it will be better this way. Just some moisture although it's fresh cocoa fiber freshly freshly prepared. That's it for it. For that, I will continue with this type of setup. This is an empty bottle of distilled water, and the rest is identical. Um, same procedure. It is still in a silken hammock, so I can remove the fake plant and trouble whatsoever. Some empty husks of flies and so on. And shove this in again a little bit. Really enough structure, but more room. She can, it can also climb on the walls and so on. Better than nothing.
kunna gå. Sorry. Well, that's quite a tough soup. Who would have thought? Yeah, get out, get out. That's good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The chilies are red, again were greenish, the other ones seemed more blue. Now I'll have to look into it again. So that I may use he or she with confidence. So far it is the, the best option, the best pronoun. I don't think they have preferred pronouns themselves. works with this foam. You can just scrunch it in and it's fixed. Not earthquake proof but it's somewhat stable. Okay, that's it for that. Well, in the mold, the chilisere seemed kind of bluish as well. So, those are did, dead, and dead. I was always a fan of Venus flytraps. Of course, as a little kid, that's pretty amazing. A plant that snaps and eats insects. But 
but uh, like many people probably I never had much success in those early days in some hardware stores that were commonly available but we treated them always as tropical swamp plants where well, they, they have to almost float in water and the warmer the better, moist and that's actually not so true. They are um, dormant in winter, that was a huge uh, step up when I started including this. Um, a few years back I had a small um, plantation of uh, Venus flytraps again from the local hardware store simply and I had them for a few years and then they slowly dwindled away and now I started with some interesting morphs. Um, there are Well, but the Venus flytrap is um, just one species in the wild and um, restricted to a small area in nature. But in the hobby there are many different uh, varieties and they are um, propagated by simply uh, cloning them, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and sometimes they are bred. Um, but, uh, Usually you just cut off the flower stems because this um, just costs energy for the plant, but um, I just left them on. I got these plants uh, last year, this one and this one, and this one I got this year. I got them from a local breeder, and these are three different varieties. Um, this one is all red C15, this one is uh, B52, which is supposed to have uh, very large traps. Well, they are not considerably larger than those of the other one. And this one is supposed to be a hybrid, a hybrid from um, Holland Red and Tunnel Trap. Tunnel Traps are those um, where the uh, trap is fused in a weird way that it looks like a funnel or a, um, and I, I found them always uh, not so nice looking I thought, thought they did not look so nice but I thought hmm, a hybrid that's interesting so I just got this one uh, in addition to the others and you can see um, the uh, all red has already um, uh, Propagated by itself. There are a multiple rosettes, and the B fifty two has uh, reduced its size in uh, comparison to last year, and the hybrid here. I think we saw also multiple plants, but I think this uh, was the case to start with. And they have flowered. Last year I um, did cut the flower stems off from the ones I had. But this year I let them flower and they produced seed, seeds. And this one is already ready for harvest, I'd say. Because there are no more nutrients going into the um, seeds, yep, obviously, but this one's they're not. Well, they, they could be ready, but I will wait just to be safe. The morph I like the most is the all red, where I will uh, keep these seeds in a special way and uh, propagate, them, propagate them separately. Um, the others I will just sprinkle around in this container and see what happens. Also the hybrid, which is uh, interesting to see what comes out of those seeds, but I'll just let them compete in this setup. I'll just cut this off and sprinkle the seeds a little bit look almost 
almost like little brum brumbles. just leave it like this. Maybe it can retrieve some nutrients. And also I will leave it to ripen just a bit. Right. What what? To my latest edition. Yesterday I went to a local breeder and got a bunch of metakas. Uh, this is uh, the Japanese rice fish. Um, I was aware of this fish years ago already, but I always assumed it's just some box standard uh, lab creature like the uh, zebra fish. And uh, last year I went through a bookstore with uh, magazines and I saw a uh, aquarium magazine and it featured the medaka prominently on the cover and I was uh, what what is, is this photoshopped or something because the eggs they hang from the um, behind of the mother and it looked kind of weird and interesting and it was referring to um, indoor and outdoor and um, well that's um, something that got me interested in this fish and I had the daisies rice fish in, uh, for a few months now. Oh, I still have them. And they are more for the um, use in a, a standard aquarium. And now I got some uh, of the real, something of the real stuff. The real deal. <laughs> the um, original Japanese rice fish. It's uh, just another species of this genus, Oritzias. Uh, this is Oritzias latipes and um, what I already have is Oritzias Boboe. Uh, yeah, I chose a, a not too conspicuous a variety. There are some um, that are really, really um, um, apparent when you look from uh, look at them from above because they are um, originally supposed to be um, kept in little ponds and such, and to be viewed from above. They can also very well be seen by predators. So I chose a less conspicuous variety. It's called, um, I don't know, the names are kind of a weird mishmash between English, Japanese and maybe French or Italian perhaps. Just like ordering at a, a certain well-known coffee shop. Um, I will pronounce it Amber Lame because otherwise it would be sounding like I'm insulting someone uh, of being uh, boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, uh, lame, or however you are supposed to pronounce it, refers to these uh, shiny scales. In the recordings you can see um, not so good because of the reflections. The polarization filter of my sunglasses helped a little bit. But I did not want to uh, get them out of their little container again because they just arrived yesterday. So um, in, in the view on the side you can see that their fins have kind of a, a reddish tint to them and um, they are perhaps somewhat close to the wild type in the phenotype. 
and uh, I like it. It's not too, uh, not too, too much. <laughs> they still look like regular fish, but they are a little bit shiny and nice to see, but not too conspicuous or too far removed, uh, far removed from the wild type. And uh, let's see. They they, are, um, they might already produce some eggs because it's um, still somewhat warm and uh, when it's 20 degrees Celsius they uh, can start reproducing. I'm um, looking forward to see what happens. And I have prepared a, a bigger a, um, a bigger tank for them outdoor for now and in the winter I will get them back in. So yeah. That's the Metaka, Boritzias latipes, Amber Lame. Lame. Who knows? And finally, my chili breeding program. This is the current generation of my Cariolokia scorpion strain heat. The fruits of it. And what I did so far is this. I took a Carioca plant as a female in the cross. And I crossed it with a Butyolokia. And this cross I self-pollinated or allowed it to self-pollinate for five generations and then I took another one of this as a male and crossed it with a Trinidad Scorpion Maruga Red. And this I crossed with the uh, Generation 5 Butyolokia Karayoka cross. Cross! <laughs> and this whole thing I um, allowed to self pollinate for four generations. This is the plant that produced these fruits and of course the seeds inside these fruits would be five, the next generation. And what I intend to do or try to do is um, cross a Carolina Reaper into it because I can't help it and I had one last year and uh, uh, seeded the F1 of it out and it was a bit weird because as you see they don't really look like the um, Carolina Reaper at least not the uh, specimen that I had that had this really prominent stinger like structure these fruits do not have it and the ones that are uh, still growing have maybe a little bit more, but not not really. Um, so I'm wondering, maybe it's just phenotypic plasticity. This one is grown indoors this year, and last year the uh, parent plant was uh, grown outdoors, and it was already older when I got it. So maybe it's just phenotypic plasticity, or maybe it's a spontaneous mutation, or maybe a recombination. It was not um, the parent plant wasn't entirely uh, homozygous, perhaps. I don't know, but um, I have the suspicion that that um, was an unintentional cross. I had some other superhots um, growing outside together with the uh, Carolina Reaper and I did not um, invoke any measures to prevent cross-pollination. Cross so maybe it's an unintentional cross. I will have to have a look at that. In the old video, what other varieties I grew along with it, and maybe it's 
it's a cross, so it might be interesting to see what happens next with the seeds out of this. But I'm also trying to pollinate um, the carrier of this fruits into my breeding line. A little explanation to my notation style here. Um, the most recent cross I highlight by writing the X bolder and um, it's always um, the, fem the, the female and the cross is always on the right side. So female, female and this is the last uh, female that was crossed in. So um, the mitochondria and the chloroplasts and other plastids, um, they are derived from the Trinidad scorpion Maruga red because that's um, usually the case. There are a few plants where the um, male also contributes um, a large amount of mitochondria, etc. But this is the usual usual case. That's um, also the basic reason, or one of the reasons why um, hybrids uh, sometimes tend to look more like the uh, female parent. I have already tried to uh, cross these two in both directions, so it would be this whole thing. Let's call it C, just for simplicity, it would be C, and then um, Carolina Reaper X, maybe, because it might be a hybrid. This would be the case when the Reaper or the Reaper hybrid is the, is the female in the cross, or the other uh, variant would be Carolina Reaper X cross for this thing and there this would be the female line. So who knows, maybe that's the rise of the Cariolokia Screeper as I would call it. <laughs> Uh, let's um, finally have a try. I will save these slightly more shriveled up ones. Um, I, this were the of uh, belong to the first fruits that were ripened, and I can assume that the seeds are certainly ripe. So I will save these for now, and more are coming as you have seen, and also on this. Um, uh, Carolina Reaper, Carolina Reaper, Reaper Hybrid, however, uh, I will save one of these. I think this one is, uh, was earlier ripe, so I will try this one. And for the Cardiolokia Scorpion Strain D, I will try no, this, this one. And have a little comparison. The size is also almost comparable. Yeah, I, I would have liked um, my breeding strain to produce slightly smaller fruits, but they will still fit into my chili mill, and that is my criterion for size. It has to fit, it, it doesn't uh, work if they are larger. So I will. Uh, Try this one first, and I don't have anything to put down the fire, but uh, what could happen? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I can imagine many things that could happen, but I will try. Cariolokia scorpion strain D, generation 4, if you will.
Um, I think I could have stayed a little more on the food. It wasn't, it wasn't entirely ripe, maybe. Nice mild taste. The heat is is there, but I guess way under what it's supposed to be. Although now that it's crawling down into my digestive tract and my stomach, I think I can feel it more on my stomach now. But the last time I tried one, I had um, a large portion of oatmeal beforehand in wise preparation, but not now, so maybe that's the difference. Yeah, um, taste is good, but the heat, um, disappointing, I have to say. I think it's even a little bit less than the last fruit I tried of this plant, from this plant. Um, now this one should be considerably hotter. But let's wait a moment if the heat develops. Wow, I'm totally unprepared for this. I don't even... I will make a tea at least. Cheers! And some more. No, I'm not ready, but ready here. Mm. So, <coughs> Carolina Reaper, or maybe Carolina Reaper and something, something that is also very hot, probably. It's really stupid to do this now without any ice cream or... I heard of a study that uh, mascarpone and toast would be the optimal solution to wash off the capsaicin and capsaicinoids source of um, of the fat from the mascarpone and the rough structure of the toast would cleanse the palate, so to speak. But I don't have any of these. I only have tea and maybe some oil or I don't know. I'll just do this now and regret it later. Regret it later. Maybe, perhaps, hardly. Oh, I haven't even bitten down and I can feel it already from the little rupture I made when I put up the stem. Oh, uh, let's, just, let's just do it. Really slow build up. Fruity, slightly bitter.
are definitely hotter than the cardiology or scorpion strategy strategy feels like the tip of my tongue is slightly numb Yeah, but I guess mm, those what I have here are not optimal growing conditions. Yeah, but there's definitely something very hot crossed inside. Oh yeah, slow build up, but. Wow. So far it's still pleasant. <coughs> I think it helps that the fruit wasn't too big. So it's not a huge bolus of um, the heat. And that's the reason why I'm trying to breed small support fruits so that I can eat them just one fruit and it's a small hit of heat and that's it. Yeah. I would say that I have had hotter ones. But not that many. Or maybe I just started to put down the fire too early so I couldn't really tell that it was slowing down. I'm just rambling, sorry. Uh, I think it has peaked now, in my mouth at least. Stomach feels alright so far. Pleasant throbbing and numbness in my mouth. Throbbing. Yeah, it's getting less now. Okay, um, definitely not a snack to munch on. But I'm curious, maybe later fruits will be hotter, because those were the very first that were ripened. And I'm curi cu curious to see whether future fruits might develop more prominent st stinger structures on the, on the berry. At the tip. So yeah, there we have it. Some heat on the end of the video and I hope this um, multi-topic freestyle rambly thing worked out so far. Congra congratulations if you watched the whole video and now it's Arriving my stomach. Hot tea works somewhat.